みっちゃんみなさん、私のチャンネルにようこそ。Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Kayla and this channel is going to be about Japanese cooking and I'm going to be throwing in some cultural and language lessons as well. So this is my first video so I hope you enjoy and yeah, let's get started. Hello, hello everybody! Welcome to my first episode. I am going to be showing you how to make udon today. And this is a very, very simple way of making udon.、Um, it's not, I'm not going to be showing how to make the noodles or how to make the broth or dashi in Japanese.、Um, it's, it's just very quick, and you can probably make this in about、mm, like、10-15 minutes if you pushed it, if you're in a rush. So, yeah, I usually have this for lunch if I don't really feel like cooking, if I don't want to get into the whole. I don't know, complex cooking method. And most importantly, this tastes delicious, it tastes authentic, and it's really easy to double, triple, or make as many as you want. So if you have a group over, if you're cooking for you and your partner, it's quite easy to double up.、Um, there's also lots of ways to tweak it. I've shown how to add all the little accessories and all the little decorations and toppings, but it's totally up to you if you want to not use green onion or not use fish cake, which is kamaboko in Japanese, which I'll show you. Um, or anything like that. So it's completely customizable, which is really great and easy and delicious. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so here are the ingredients you'll need. You'll need one packet of fresh udon, and I use Hokkaido udon by Nitin Noodle. Some broth, and please look in the description for an explanation of what broth to use. You need one green onion, one egg, some ikaten kasu, some taku a n g which is pickled radish. And some kamaboko, which is steamed fish cake. So, first you're gonna want to boil the water. And while the water is coming to a boil, chop the green onion. And so I chop these kind of thick here, but you're probably gonna want to slice them a little bit thinner than what I have. Next, you're gonna want to slice the kamaboko or the fish cake. And don't slice this too thick, they taste a lot better when you slice them thinly. And then lastly, the taku a n g which you want to slice about the same thickness or maybe a little bit thicker than the kamaboko or the fish cake. And once the water has come to a boil, add the noodles without breaking them apart once you add them to the pot. Then set your timer for however long the noodles stay to take on the package. And add an egg. And so now we're gonna make the broth, and there's my little Matryoshka measuring cup. And for my broth, I use a quarter cup of the actual broth and I water it down with some water. So, what I'm doing is just pouring it into the quarter cup and then pouring it into my mug, which measures out to two cups, which is how much broth you're gonna generally want per dish. And now I'm pouring in the boiling water that I've already boiled so that when the noodles are ready, I could just pour it on straight away and it'll be hot. And just so I don't ruin my table, I've put it on my little pig coaster. Now, you want to take the noodles and the egg out of the pot. I couldn't film this because I don't have a tripod that's high enough. But、um, yeah, so right now, without putting the broth in, you want to put all the little decorations the egg, the kamaboko, everything on top of the noodles, which are in the finished bowl that you want to serve it in, without putting the broth on. You put the broth on last. So, that when you're decorating it, they don't kind of float away as soon as you put them down on the noodles. Everything stays in place and you can put everything where you like without having it kind of float away and not look as pretty. The taku a n usually goes on the side. You can add it to the noodles if you like, but usually on the side. And Also, now we're just adding the broth. And I didn't add all of it because that was enough for me, but it's totally up to you. And yep,、yeah, there you go. There's your finished product. Hi, everybody. So I hope you enjoyed watching my first tutorial. Please let me know in the comments below if you liked it or what I should change. It was my first time doing this, and I was kind of holding the camera with my hand as I was filming, so I'm sorry if it was a little bit shaky. Um, also, one more tip、uh, before I leave you guys. This here has caused me so much confusion when I was first, I don't know, kind of getting into Japanese or Asian cuisine because I didn't really know how to use the spoon. I thought that 
I don't know, you just use it to like drink the broth like you do in Western cuisine. But actually, what you do, and by the way, this is called the chirirenge in Japanese. I'll have it written somewhere on the screen, chirirenge. And what you do is you pick up the noodles. I've actually already eaten the noodles, so I can't really do this, but what you do is you pick up the noodles with your chopsticks, and since they're hot, while uh, they're cooling, in order to let them cool faster, which I believe, um, you set them while still holding them with your chopsticks. You set like the little base, like the ends of the noodles, in the little area of the spoon so it cools so it's not sitting in the hot broth so it makes it easier to eat. So usually when you're eating, you have um, the chopsticks in your dominant hand, which is my right, and I have the chirirenge, or you can just also call it like spoon, I think. Spoon is spoon in Japanese. Um, so you hold it in your left hand and you just kind of slurp the noodles like this. Like. Also, another fact about Japanese culture, it isn't considered rude when you are slurping your soup, actually your noodles. Um, I think this was only appropriate when you're eating traditional Japanese food like ramen or udon or soba, not like spaghetti or things like that. But when I was in Japan the first time, I knew this going over there that slurping the noodles is a sign that you're enjoying the food, that you think it tastes good and everything like that. And I tried so many times to practice before I went over trying to slurp, but it was really hard for me to kind of learn how to inhale when I was sucking in noodles. I guess that's what you do when you suck in noodles anyway. But it was just so, so hard for me <laughs> to like inhale and actually make a sound. So the first time I was out um, eating, I think it was ramen with my host family, I was sitting there eating them and I knew I was doing it wrong. I was just like hoping that they wouldn't say anything and they did and they were like, oh, Kayla, do you think it doesn't taste good? Um, so that's when I kind of learned that you kind of have to do it in Japan. Um, so I tried really hard and now I just don't even think about it and I just end up doing it whenever I eat noodles like that. But um, yeah, so if you see Japanese people um, eating noodles and they're making a slippery noise, it's not rude, it's actually a compliment to the chef. So yes, just that little fact for you guys. Um, but yeah, this is the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. I am going to be posting a little bento box recipe, hopefully next week before Easter. I'm going to be busting my butt, but I hope I can get it up by then. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy that. And yeah, I'm really excited for this channel. I hope you are too. And yes, please give me any constructive criticism, anything below. I'm always looking forward to learn and make this channel the best it can be. So thank you so much, guys, and have a great day. Bye.